Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be responding to the media frenzy around PFOS in cosmetics. Everyone over on TikTok has been freaking out over this, and many of you have tagged me in their post asking me to comment on it. What are PFOS? PFOS stands for polyfluoroalkyl substances. These are a class of chemicals that are added to a variety of consumer products like nonstick cookware and water repellent clothing. PFOS are also added to cosmetics because they help improve spreadability as well as durability of cosmetic products. A study published in Environmental Science and Technology Letters set out to test the presence of PFOS in cosmetic products from the U.S. and Canada. They purchased 231 different cosmetic products from the U.S. and Canada from a variety of retailers, including Target, Sephora, Ulta, and Shoppers Drug Mart, and they tested these for the presence of fluorine. Fluorine is thought to be like a surrogate marker, I guess, of PFOS. Three quarters of waterproof mascaras tested contained high fluorine levels, and two thirds of foundations and liquid lipsticks also contained high fluorine. And then more than half of the eye and lip products they tested had high fluorine. They noted that different categories of makeup tended to have higher concentrations of fluorine. Those products that were advertised as like wear resistant, are long lasting, tended to have higher amounts of fluorine, things like liquid lipsticks and certain uh, foundations. They then analyzed a subset of 29 of those for actual PFOS, and they found that all of the products had at least four PFOS. Remember, this is a large class of chemicals. There are a variety of different ones. Why are people so freaked out about this? Well, they are concerned for potential health effects from exposure to PFOS in cosmetics. The CDC points to studies which suggest a possible association, although not causation, association between exposure to PFOS and certain adverse health effects, namely elevated cholesterol, an increased risk of testicular and kidney cancer, changes in liver enzymes, and a decreased vaccine response in children, as well as an increased risk of preeclampsia or high blood pressure in pregnant women. It's easy to get freaked out when you hear things like increased risk of kidney cancer, but it's important to take a step back. There's really not enough data to know for sure, if at all, that exposure to PFOS, especially in cosmetics, is at all harmful to human health. Not all of these studies involve the same groups, the same routes of exposure. Many of them were done using animal models with very, very high levels of PFOS, which is not at all what would be found in cosmetic products. Not to mention the fact that we have no reason to believe that these are absorbed through the skin. Now, many people point to concerns that since a lot of these products are going to be used around the eyes or on the mouth, that because in those areas you have the mucosal membranes, the thin moist membranes, where you're, you're more likely to absorb things, that that's a, a riskier location. But still, you could make that argument about really any ingredient in lipsticks or mascaras. So you can't assume that the presence of PFOS in cosmetic products is necessarily bad. Um, I am very doubtful that these are even absorbed whatsoever into the skin. PFOS are very durable, they do not degrade, and many people are concerned that if they are absorbed into the body, that they'll be there forever. You may have heard of them referred to as forever chemicals, but we really don't have any evidence that these actually cause human disease or any adverse effect. I have yet to read a study or a report of people who start using waterproof mascara suddenly developing testicular cancer or kidney cancer. So it's really, really hard to say for sure, if at all, that exposure to PFOS is causing harm to human health, especially in the minute quantities present in cosmetic products. Where you might you know, worry more is that these can contaminate our drinking water and potentially you could consume them through contaminated drinking water to high levels. That would be more worrisome. But what you're gonna be exposed to in a waterproof mascara, in a liquid lipstick, is very, very, very negligible amounts. It doesn't seem likely that this is the threat that people on TikTok are making it out to seem. 
Scientists tested more than 200 concealers, foundations, eye and eyebrow products, and lip products, and found high levels of a cancer-causing chemical in more than half of them. Waterproof mascara was the worst offender, with 82% of products that scientists tested having this chemical. The scientist in charge of the study said that when this chemical gets into your body, it doesn't get processed out like everything else. It just gets in and stays there. There was also a study done in Denmark in 2018, very similar to this, that measured the amounts of PFAS in cosmetic products in Denmark. And they concluded that the amounts present are very negligible and unlikely to be pose a risk to consumers. Also, the way that they measured PFAS with the fluorine assay, it's possible that some of this wasn't even necessarily added to the product, but rather contamination, or perhaps it came from the plastic cartons. I think it's interesting that this study was done by a, a group called the Green Science Policy Institute. This appears to be a nonprofit organization. It's not like an academic research center. It is a nonprofit and they are very tightly linked with policy making and that is their motivation. So I would, I would look at that with some level of skepticism. You, you really have to wonder what their motivations are. To me, this really has the undertones of green, clean beauty and a push for a lobbying push for policies to control ingredients. It's really disappointing when the media puts out these sensationalized headlines of toxic chemicals, let alone TikTok, people going to TikTok, you know, pushing this and saying sort of the same thing. It's really spread in a viral manner, which is really one of the scariest things, in my opinion, about social media. I mentioned this earlier about the whole echo chamber thing, where you can take a tagline and just keep repeating it over and over again as a way to evoke fear in people, but we're not really critically looking at the information here at all. And as far as I can see from what I have been able to find, we really don't have solid evidence that these compounds actually cause human disease, let alone in the negligible quantities that they are present in cosmetic products, things like mascaras, long wear lipsticks, and, and your foundations. So in my opinion, I would not throw out my makeup, although you guys know I don't wear makeup, but I would not throw out my makeup because of these this article and because of all of this hype, I would continue to use the same things. I don't think that these are harmful to human health. Now, you could also make the argument that these could potentially be harmful to the environment. Again, in cosmetic products, it's going to be in trace amounts. And so, you know, limiting your consumption of products, in my opinion, is always a good idea to minimize an environmental footprint. This is where the clean beauty movement can really get you if you're not careful because they will swoop in and say, we don't have PFAS in our products that are harmful to the environment and that you know cause kidney cancer or whatever. Well, they'll make sensationalized claims like that and they'll sell you a product that likewise could harm the environment. You know, So it's, it's something to be really critical of when you are faced with these sensational headlines about toxic ingredients. A lot of it comes from a lobbying group. I've mentioned this before about how I don't trust the environmental working group, how they misrepresent science, and this is very much along the same lines. The way that this has blown up and has been you know, sensationalized on social media. This will feed into the free labeling that is a way basically to market products to you. It is not a way to keep you safe or healthy, let alone protect the environment. Because remember, if you want to protect the environment, you don't make more products. And so just be careful because I predict that we're going to start seeing tons of clean beauty products being pumped out that say PFOS free, PFOS free. And you know, people, you know, d ditching all of their current products for PFOS free. This comes in waves with, you know, whatever the the ingredient du jour is. It used to be parabens; those are losing traction. Now it's going to be PFOS. You actually can measure blood levels of PFOS um, of some of these PFOS, and the CDC has actually been monitoring uh, blood levels 
since 1999. And believe it or not, the national PFAS levels have dropped over time between 1999 and 2014. To what extent, if any, we're getting exposed from lipstick? It seems unlikely. It really seems unlikely. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this. But speaking of parabens, on the next slide, I'm gonna link a video that you can watch if you haven't already about what I think about parabens and skincare products. So definitely check that out if you haven't watched it and you're worried about parabens. Uh, but if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.